And we're live. Fawaz, how you been, man? It's good, man. It's been a while. I know, right? Maybe <laughs> a year I'm... or so. No, last time I was here was in April. You were gracious enough to have me come and uh, and uh, talk about my first album, Trinity Youngest. And you got a second one coming out, right? Yeah, December 27th. What's that been like? I like it more than the first one. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, 16 tracks. There's more tracks on there. Um, three more tracks. Okay, so the first one had 13 tracks? Yeah, 13. Okay, yeah, 16. Right. You're cranking them out. Yeah, yeah. And the funny thing about this one was I, I had to make them count. Because normally what a rapper would do is, and you know this, when you yeah. put out an album, you make about 30 songs. And yeah, you yeah. Like 12 of the best ones. Nope, I made 16 tracks and that's it. Oh, okay. Because I was about to ask you, did you like make more? Is that going to be a bonus? No. Is it going to be like the lost tapes, you know? No, yeah. It's like, you know, it's 16 <laughs> tracks all going in the album. So they all, I had to make them count. All of them. And, and this is your final album, right? Yeah, uh, pretty much um, for now. Um, for now? Okay. I uh, I ended up, people were so gracious enough i recouped enough funds mm -hmm. from the first album to make the second one mm -hmm. and i'm gonna use the funds from the second album to promote the both albums as promotion because the, the whole thing is, is i'm really trying to get catholic rap or just catholic music out into the scene so that the secular world and the protestants don't you know hog all the spotlight yeah, have, have have you been criticized yet for doing uh catholic rap <laughs> i have um Funny when you say that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I remember I um, uh, my main my main criticism actually came from uh, like older folks. I would say TLM folks <laughs> who, who who thinks who think that you know rap rap is intrinsically evil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously that's not the case. I mean rap instinct. So in a way, I can sympathize with some of their concerns. Mm -hmm. I, I I also hold because. I understand how music works in relationship to the faculties of the person. Mm -hmm. Music has a hierarchy as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I can sympathize with them, but I would I would push back and I would say, well, country music is syncopated, but why is that acceptable? You know, I and I, I don't know what his take is um, sure. on Catholic rap, but I remember that Ripperger, Father Ripperger, was talking about how some forms of music could in and of themselves, like, I forget what exactly he was saying, but I guess like rise the passions or something like that. And, and yeah, be that's, disordered. that's what syncopated really means. Yeah. Yeah. But so, I don't know what his take is on like Catholic rap. Stuff oh, like he likes that. me. He likes my music. Oh, OK, good. OK. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think what they're some of those people who are criticizing it, they might be taking some of that legitimate criticism that they've Correct. heard there and applying it to what you're doing. Do you think that maybe is that's what's going on? I think that's what's happening. I think it's a little extreme because, um, you know, my pushback would be, mm -hmm. um, I think in moderation, it's mm -hmm. acceptable. We can't be scrupulous to the point where we think everything is, ex is excessive and everything is intrinsically mm -hmm. evil. Because my thing is like, rap music is no different than TV. It's a medium. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't call a television intrinsically evil, but you would moderate how much you watch because watching too much of it is bad for you. Does that mean too much of of Fawa's album is bad for you? <laughs> too much Enoch is hard. It's, don't play my songs from like morning to night. If you're going to chant, you can. It doesn't affect the faculties as much. Uh, uh, but but rap, you know, even with my music, I would say you know once a week or let's say if you're like driving somewhere, I oh the gym. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys have told me they use my music at the gym mm -hmm. because the, now, now now that's using it according to this proper. And, I could see that it's more yeah. energetic, upbeat. Yeah, right. And the, and the lyrics, the lyrics are not filth, so you don't have to worry about yeah. that. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, that that's true. So, any other criticism that you've heard, or is that pretty much it? Uh, let's see, someone said that I was probably possessed by the devil. Ah, nice. Because <laughs> because nice. I was, uh, uh, which is really funny because um, I'm I was impressed that the person could discern something from an online standpoint that not even exorcists can do in person. Not even Ripperger could do that. I mean, not, even Father, just... not even Father Ripperger could look at someone and say that person is... An possessed. actual exorcist. I mean, right, he, right. Could, he couldn't do it. Yeah. So, so I, I, I I contacted Ripperger. I said, you got to get this person on your team immediately. I know, because, right? You know, they, they recognize the seven demons in me immediately because I was spitting, some, <laughs> spitting on the microphone. But, uh, but yeah, that's about it. Um, that, mm. Other than that, but on the whole, it's been pretty positive, right? Yes. 
funny you say that. Uh, just if you don't mind, I just want to briefly mm-hmm. share yeah. this. Yeah. I so I was a director of youth ministry for twelve years, mm-hmm. uh, and you know, for for Nova Sorda Church, um, mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I try to run it as as authentically Catholic as possible. And um, I, when I first set out to make music, I thought to myself, I think there's so many young adults they got their headphones on, they're listening to trash music, especially rap music. Like you know, if if, if I can kind of mimic the production mm-hmm. and, and get something out there that's similar to, to the secular world, but with Catholic content, I can get the young adults to listen to this, right? Uh-uh. <laughs> you know who's interested in my music? I get messages on a daily basis. 40-year-old woman telling me that their five-year-olds love my music. What? <laughs> five, six, seven, eight-year-old. Every day I get a message, my five-year-old knows all of your lyrics. So I went from Enoch to Nanny G. Literally, I became this like ch- children musician and all these like, you know, mothers and, and parents talking about how their little kids like my music. So there, there goes my uh, my ambition to be this young adult, you know, preacher over here. So it's kind of funny. Wow. So 40 year olds, 40 year old mothers and their children and their children. Not <laughs> something that I would have expected. <laughs> yeah, that blew me out. I was like, what is going on, man? It's kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, other than that, not, not much. It's, it's been very, very positive, and I've been appreciative of everybody's support. Yeah, well, well, that's good. And when did you say the second album is coming out? December 27th, yeah. December 27th. So <laughs> let's talk about, you know, social media and Catholicism on it. This is a curious phenomenon. It's something that I've just been fascinated with. I see all kinds of stuff. The first thing I'm curious if you've observed yourself is, do you think that there's maybe a danger of people living virtually through social media, maybe kind of in a way that's not really true and honest to how they actually are in person? Have you ever kind of noticed differences between people online versus how they are in reality? Um, yeah, I, I, I have, um, not a lot because I have, have yet to meet a lot of the folks that I associate with online. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a difference. For example, when I, f- if, if it wasn't for my music, I wouldn't have any social media whatsoever. I'm mm-hmm. not a huge fan of it, to be honest with you. But, uh, I, I, I think there's, I've, I've, I've found to be more charity in folks from, mm-hmm from Instagram, for example. Catholic Instagram, I think, is really, um, there's, there's, it's healthier than what I think most people say Catholic Twitter. Now, my experience with Catholic Twitter has has been pretty good because of the people has that it? went on there. Really? And for me, for me at least. And of course, it's like, who who uh, who wants to go after this no-name Catholic rapper that just wants to make music for the church, right? Uh, and well, and, evidently, and, the guy who said that you were possessed. I mean, <laughs> that, that, yeah, yeah, that woman, uh, she, uh, she, she's, she woman. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I think there's a tendency that when you're behind a keyboard, mm-hmm. um, you can kind of speak. And I've seen people, and I know this for, 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 for fact, I, I've seen folks who, who've gone at it on, on, on Twitter mm-hmm. back and forth, and then that person will meet. The person at a conference mm-hmm. or something and then say you know uh this person is awesome and it's like well there's a difference when you meet somebody and they actually try to gauge their body language and and, and what they really mean in the context and try mm-hmm. to hash things out versus you have 200 characters on a screen and you get to type your response and rebuttal back and forth because most people don't even read what you're saying yeah. they're just waiting for their response yeah to you know to what, what you said so I think there's there, there there's a danger in that. Mm-hmm. And I mean, what, what do you think? I mean, what, well, I mean, is, and, and is two hundred characters? Is it two hundred or two forty? I don't know. It's something, something like that. that. But know. like two hundred characters, is that really even enough to explain a nuanced position? No. It's it's really hard to be understood when you're limited in that way in characters. Now I know what you can do like a follow up thread. And this is confusing. Mo- but yeah. most people are going to read that number two. I tend to use my phone, and so I don't want to sit there and do a hundred follow-up threads explaining something <laughs> when I can maybe just do a five-minute video right, explaining right. what I mean there rather than on Twitter, and sure. it's going to get lost anyway. People aren't really going to 
uh, read it unless somebody screenshots just that one tweet to say, look how much of a heretic Michael is or something like that. Right, right, right. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably the only time. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, uh, I know uh, Matt, even like someone like Matt Frad, who, mm-hmm. who recently left Twitter, mm-hmm. and had, a, had this conversation that uh, he had about social media with uh, Trent Horn. Mm-hmm. And I agree with what what, the, what of them are saying. I think we're 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 setting a, a dangerous precedence here, and even with this with this meta metaverse, <laughs> I mean, how much further are we going to get away from reality? I, li- I, know- I literally, I literally had to learn what the metaverse was maybe <laughs> less than a month ago. Yeah, I, isn't like how, I think the metaverse. Ha- help me make sure that I get it right here. Go ahead. Yeah, the metaverse is it's not necessarily reality. It's it's how life is online rather than in reality. Is that right? Think of Dwight Schrute, Second okay. Life. Yeah, now that makes sense to me. So I, that, I get the yeah. office references here. Yeah, yeah, so that's what it is. And But the funny part about it is, is you could actually live <clears throat> as a second person, but yeah. actually make money in real life off of that reality. The mm. same way as you would with Instagram ads or things like that. But you're literally living in a reality, in, in, in a separate reality completely separated i'm sorry you're, you're, you're living in a separated fantasy mm-hmm. and you're and, and 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 you're living in, and you, you put these goggles on and everything is just it's like you be you become the video game that you've been playing by per- just pretending to be an online persona that you're not really in reality is that what it Correct. is Correct. yeah you you get to recreate yourself in that atmosphere in that universe yeah yeah okay i could see that and yeah. and it seems like there's a lot of anonymity online, especially with Twitter, but other places as well. And I kind of feel like that anonymity allows people to behave in a way that they wouldn't if their actual identity was known. That that's it. I know mm. some people wouldn't say no. I, I would behave this way either way. Maybe some would, but I think that a lot of people behave a certain way online with the protection of anonymity. Mm-hmm. And without any kind of negative consequences that comes back to bite them as far as their actual identity. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're, you're, abs- you're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, there, there is no consequence. Right. Because you can just shut down that account, create another exactly. anonymous account. <laughs> Who said it? Was it Mike Tyson? He said, uh, he said the problem with society today is, uh, I think he said something like, um, uh, is that you know you could be a, a a keyboard warrior because you haven't been punched in the face yet. <laughs> <laughs> so that, yeah, so if there's if there's if there's no consequence, and, and again, I'm not talking about anybody specific. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying in general, when you have mm-hmm. you 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 have a lot of these issues, and it's addictive. I mean, they mm-hmm. did this. They did the study on how 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 addictive Twitter is, mm-hmm. and it's it's almost like it's almost like giving giving a mouse every t- every time you get mm-hmm. a like or a response it's giving a mouse a small you know mm-hmm. crumb of cheese it's he's always going to come back for more because it's not enough and you know it's like you know you put out a tweet next thing you know it's like now you're checking refresh 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 how many likes and how many uh, how many comments am i getting and that and that creates a dopamine response and then now you keep going back back and forth so if we're talking about somebody who's building virtue mm-hmm. or, or or living in, in life of i mean Imagine giving a Twitter account to, a, to the Desert Fathers. <laughs> <laughs> it's just won't work. You know what I'm saying? It's like the, these people who their faculties were just so like the intellect and the and the will was father the emotions to such a degree where they gave up everything. And and, and here we are trying. And I like what Frat said. He said, "I don't mind going." to that realm of, of, of virtual reality, mm-hmm. as long as that we're <clears throat> preaching to people and bring them back to reality. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to set up camp and metaverse and talk about Jesus. I mean, it's like, imagine that. Imagine you're a street preacher in your second life, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to right now still imagine a desert father on Twitter. I mean, I feel like if the desert father was on Twitter, which yeah. I don't know why they would be, but if right. they were, we would all be getting called out for sin. <laughs> <laughs> I think all of us. The would get on Twitter? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think all of us would get a scolding review. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yeah, we, we we would. Yeah, I, I, and rightfully so. I think we deserve it. 
I, I think so, but I just I couldn't see somebody who's a desert father actually engaged with society like that. But maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I remember um, Athanasius wrote about Anthony the Great. Yeah. And he mentioned that he would come out of the desert on occasion <clears throat> to address the Aryan heresy. So maybe he would come out and, and jump on <laughs> Twitter and condemn us all or something. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and he, he could. Yeah. And, and he, because he, he was funny. I, yeah. I, you heard that story of him on the boat? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a funny story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not very far from me. Yeah. Um, saying, uh, saying, uh, but it, 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 my biggest issue with Twitter now, see, Facebook, I think, is a little bit more. Because you could like you don't have you're not limited. You can type as many mm -hmm. as you want. Um, you can break people's arguments and and and, and go back and forth with people. Mm -hmm. I think in a very charitable way. Mm -hmm. But you know, with the small 240 characters like you said that you have, even when you have a thread, it gets so confusing. And who answered what and stuff like that. It's just not charitable. I think Twitter needs to change that. Um, well, wasn't that? supposed to kind of change with elon musk or, or not really i mean i think with elon musk they were more talking about just less consequences more freedom of speech i think that was kind of the idea correct yeah yeah and now he's doing the eight dollars per month verification <laughs> the what I, I haven't heard of this what is this so you know how people get their blue checks and you have to be like a like a prominent person in society um he pretty much got this so, you know, people who get the blue checks, they're verified on Twitter. People are verified on Twitter. And usually it's the big accounts, right? Oh, okay. Well, Elon came in and said, well, this is peasant and, you know, ruler mm -hmm. type mentality. Anybody who pays eight bucks a month now gets a verified check. Mm. So the the the, you know, the the oligarchs, the, the rulers of the world, you know, the people who who, who, who rule uh, uh, Twitter, who, the big mm -hmm. accounts, mm -hmm. are all upset now because you know everybody is now everybody gets to eat cake now for eight bucks a month, and that's genius on his part because yeah. when you lose a lot of the um, ads <laughs> from these big companies, now you've got millions of people paying you eight bucks a month because mm. everyone's going to want to do it. Everybody wants a blue check, so. And Twitter is so addicting. Those who are already on Twitter with the big accounts, they're not going to give that up because Musk is on there. The same way people didn't leave USA for Canada when Trump got elected, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. they promised they would. Mm -hmm. So I got off Twitter. It just seemed like a dumpster fire to me. Um, and this was like right before Elon Musk. Um, I guess took over Twitter. Right? Okay. Yeah, but and and I was kind of thinking, okay, maybe things will turn around. But then now I'm not so sure. Did you see that that thing he was wearing? In fact, I got a picture of it. You see, uh, <laughs> it's like this demon suit or something that he's wearing. Oh, was this at the, up here. At, at the at the Catholic theme gala? <clears throat> yeah, it was something like that. Let me see. Yeah, no, I thought I had it. Uh, here Musk, it is. Musk is not a. You oh, see that? Man. No, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. What in the world is going on? It's like the I think it's called the Devil's Champion or something uh, like that. And yeah. it's like the horns and everything. What is going on with him? Not at all what I expected, I guess. <laughs> Elon, Elon is yeah, he's he he's a, he's a he's an interesting individual. Mm -hmm. You know, smart in some areas, but um I think the smarter you get, sometimes you lose some of that common sense, <laughs> normal common sense that you know normal <laughs> simple folks like me have. <laughs> it's so weird to see that. It, right. Okay, I mean, but maybe he still is going to help promote freedom of speech. But my question is, and and look, to an extent, I think that that's a great thing. I don't think right. Christians, for instance, should be restricted from spreading the gospel. But at the same time, does there come a point where there's too much license given mm -hmm. to speech? I mean, the spread of misinformation, malicious attacks against people. I, I just, yeah. And I just kind of wonder at what point do we say, okay, this isn't allowed? Right. So I think he, he wants to work under the scope of the law. Mm -hmm. So under the mm -hmm. scope of the law, the only time where you get your account taken out is if you're in, engaging in violence, yeah. yeah, violence, stuff like that. But you know, I, as a Catholic, I think you should 
go a little bit further than that, me, me personally, because when we're talking about freedom of speech, what we're really talking about is liberality of speech. Mm-hmm. Because freedom and liberality are two different things. Um, you mm-hmm. know, liberality is doing whatever you want to do. Freedom is the is the responsibility to do what you ought to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think even JP two said that in a very eloquent way. Mm-hmm. Um, so I but we're gonna we're gonna have like a debate on well what ought someone to do right 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 yeah that becomes the uh, the debate within the debate right it's yeah. uh, within the definition. So the question here is is does somebody have the freedom or the right to blaspheme against God? I guess the public score like that. I mean, mm-hmm. what what do you think? Do you, do you, uh, I would never do it, but do you think somebody I, has a free will I, to do so, right? They have the ability to do right. so. I don't right. think that they should be able to do so. Right. So that's where I'm probably at odds with some Catholics. Some Catholics would go and say, no, I think that you should have a right to do that publicly. And I want to say, no, you shouldn't. And even Vatican II seems to indicate otherwise. It says Correct. within due limits. And I would say those are one of the due limits. Correct. No, um, I, I, I would agree with you there. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. then that would kind of then assume that w- we're going to have to work through some issues like the natural law. Yes. Um, at the very least. Yeah. Um, And I just don't know if that's something that the average person has really done, you know. But again, the, I, I, I'm. I understand some people are, who are saying, look, you don't want to restrict things because then you don't have the opportunity to spread the truth. I, I understand that, but right. does that then mean that you should be able to spread things that are contrary to nature, that are harmful to society? But then again, it begs the question, like, it's according to whom, that. right? Right. It's <laughs> harmful to society now. according to whom? Right. Uh, but I would say, well, at the very least, maybe, you know, Christians and non-Christians, we don't share maybe sacred revelation together, but what we do share together is what can be known by reason. So if this is something that's harmful, at least as known according to reason, then we shouldn't do it. But some might say, well, blasphemy isn't something that you could know according to reason. Right, right. That makes sense. Okay, yeah. I mean, my my big thing when it comes to these the, the, these elites, and now now they have secular fact checkers. You you, you heard of these mm, people? Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you know what you know what I say about that? <laughs> no, it, it is it is the, the contradiction is is laughable. It, it's how can you say that you a fact checker at uh-huh. the same time claim there's no such thing as objective truth? Right, right, yeah. What are you what are you fact checking here? <laughs> Everything is subjective. <laughs> Obviously, if that if it's that person's truth. Yeah. Right. It's like at the same. It's like the the secular world is so is has such a huge contradiction. I don't even. So the fact checkers. With that. Yeah. Like the fact checkers, are they coming from that perspective that there's no objective truth? Everything's just kind of relative. Well, a, a lot of them are. A mm-hmm. lot of them. A lot of them are your secularists. Uh, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, human. You know, they they're not they're not faithful at all. A lot mm-hmm. of them are just leftists, and and most leftists are come from that understanding because if they didn't, they would not have. You know, trans transgender information and things uh, yeah. stuff like that. So, you know, your truth is your truth, but at the same time, if you disagree with my truth, I'm going to fact check you, even though there's no such thing as truth. I mean, it just makes no sense. It, there's just so many problems with this issue, but a, a huge problem is, I think it was Jordan Peterson who was originally talking about this, and that is that people are trying to regulate one's own speech. You know, that mm. I have to say that you are a female, even though you were born biologically as a male, that you now get to determine how I perceive you Correct. and how I address you. I have to share in your delusion, basically. Yeah, that was his problem. Yeah. Yeah. The- and I think once we go down that route, it's like if I think I'm a pizza, <laughs> you, have to, <laughs> you know, you have to treat me as a pizza. Like, that was the problem. Upon yeah. what basis are you going to say, no, I don't? Well, you're going to say, well, you're not. You're a human. You're not a piece of it, right? But, <laughs> <laughs> but now we're getting into the realm of objectivity. And so if we're back in this realm, then, okay, then can't we say that this person is actually a male rather than a female, even though they identify as a female? Right. Yeah. And then not not only, not only I think what you said is very important, not only that, but you use the government as as, as, as the, the, the the arm to strike you down if you then if you disagree. Right. Or, right. You know, you should be you should be put in prison for offending my delusional meta, you know, metaverse reality of myself. <laughs> and, and that 
um, that you know that that becomes an issue. But I think going back to Twitter for a moment, Michael, like what is the mm. worst experiences that you've received? Oh goodness. Um, you know, when 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 it comes to Twitter, I mean, do you think a lot of that stuff is people just misjudging what you have said rather than trying like to ask me personally? Yeah, yeah, yeah personally, yeah. <clears throat> um, a lot of people just taking what I was saying out of context, either unintentionally or deliberately, don't know, but right. certainly taking it out of context, accusing me of heresy, then twisting it, running with it, and then that gets repeated by somebody else with a different spin on it and then that gets repeated by somebody else with a different spin on it and then before you know it all kinds of things are just being said and, and you just sit back and think what in the world is going Playing on telephone. This, is, this is crazy land this is just it's not hard to verify what a person says or yeah. to see what the context was and so right. for me i just deleted twitter because i just thought you know what um I'm not so sure that I want to spend hours on social media clarifying myself. Um, if I'm going to be twisted out of context this easily, it's probably best that I just leave it alone. That's a good way to, to look at it. I, I remember one example, I think this is coming from, from you, when you said that we don't literally eat mm -hmm. The body, the body of mm -hmm. Christ. I, you know, I, mm -hmm. I, 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 and, and I knew exactly what you were saying because the distinction yeah. you made is very Thomistic. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's not like when we get to heaven, there's going to be an eyeball left of Christ right. in, in, right. in his human nature. Um, yeah, and I think that's that's what you were saying, and that people yeah. took it as, as as if you're denying or attacking transubstantiation. Well, the irony is, I was actually affirming the Council of Trent <laughs> over against those who are denying the Council of Trent, and they're saying that I'm denying Trent. Right. And that they're affirming it when it's the exact opposite. Sure. I was saying we don't literally eat Christ, meaning, and I explained what I meant, right. meaning in the accidents, in the appearances, I don't eat a kneecap or an eyeball or I don't have blood coming out of my mouth or something. It, accidentally in the appearances, that is what I meant literally. Right. Because that's what some people mean by literally. Yeah. Other people might use the word literally to mean truly and really. Sure. And that's the language of trance. So okay if that's what you mean by literally that's fine that lines up with trent but i fear that some people who are don't know anything about thomism or catholicism as a whole they hear us talking about we literally eat christ they're thinking that we have eyeballs and kneecaps and stuff coming out of our mouth and that's not at all what we're saying yes we truly uh, receive body blood soul and divinity bone and sinew but in substance not an accident. Not an accident. So yep. it all depends on like what do you mean by literally. And my point was, I was talking to somebody, telling them that I don't think this language is helpful because non-Catholics who don't know about Thomism and what we're actually saying here are going to misunderstand what we're saying and think that we're cannibalists. So, and in <laughs> fact, they do tend to use that argument and say transubstantiation is absurd because, and then they present it as if we're cannibalists and. I'm just saying, no, let's rather use the language of Trent truly right. and really. And now imagine you got like 200 characters on, on, on Twitter. <laughs> you, you really want me to explain that long nuanced answer that I just gave like on problem. Twitter over and over and over for every single commenter that takes me out of context? I'm not right. doing that. That's the I'm problem. You miss anything at all about Twitter? No. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. I get it. That's, I hear you. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it was always trolls. It was always people who were taking me trolls and bots. out of context, ripping yeah. stuff out, misrepresenting me, and then trying to use that to attempt to dunk on me Got rather it. than really engage my content. Sure. Sure. Which is really, yeah, it's weird because, like, I, I personally have met, not, I haven't met him in person, in person. But I've met uh, some people who've just been the most, you know, charitable people on on Twitter to me at least. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I can't speak from that experience. And then mm -hmm. again, I know I, like I said before, who who wants to criticize a no name Catholic rapper, right? <laughs> so, um, and then and, and every you know people that I've uh, experienced, and I had a guy move from Long Island to Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't know this, but it turned out he came, his wife came, went up to my wife, she says, did your husband make music? And it turned out to be, he was one of the cousins of one of the people that I, I had met on Twitter. Mm -hmm. you know, and the guy I met on Twitter is a great guy. 
Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome dude. Um, you know, was, I, I always try to be charitable. D stays away from the church politics. Mm -hmm. Doesn't like to, you know, publicly to, to go after Francis, even though he has, you know, mm -hmm. some, some thoughts about that. And 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 I just I've just been really appreciative of the people that I've met on there. Uh, but at the same time, sometimes I see some some, some things like some of the folks that'll that'll be attacking you, and I know that it looks like it's, it's done. There's, there's there's not much charity in it. Only mm -hmm. because I know you personally and I know mm -hmm. your positions. Mm -hmm. And I think they're just a bit misunderstanding who you who you really are and what you actually really mean. <laughs> I think I sent somebody sent it to me earlier. So yeah. I, I sent it to you. Uh, and it was somebody who on one of these YouTube videos in the comment section saying that <clears throat> Michael Lofton is jewish so he has the anti-logos mentality innate in him and so they're saying that i'm jewish and i'm anti-christian and that i apostatized to eastern orthodoxy and because of that i became an orthodox universalist ecumenist who is not interested in dialogue with orthodoxy that's almost verbatim a quote wow. and i'm just reading this thinking there literally nothing that was just said there was accurate not right. one thing and i'm just thinking how could somebody twist me and get me wrong so much but you know what that's what they do to pope francis every day right so if if they do that to pope francis and others they're gonna do that to me right. and others, so yeah yeah it was almost this, this 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 attack i mean for me it almost came out of nowhere for me i you've probably been experiencing this and I, I think I told you this before. I think it was a lot of this. Um, my theory was the whole Trump theory. Mm -hmm. I think for for the longest time you had the uh, the traditional talking points against the current pontificate, Vatican mm -hmm. II, and um, you had a, a, a lot of these same talking points that a lot mm -hmm. of people had. Mm -hmm. And it, and I think what, what ended up happening is as soon as as soon as and this is again my inter interpretation as a guy from the outside looking in to see what see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I could kind of pinpoint, you know, mm -hmm. pin it down. I think I think what happened is you ended up f not so much attacking anyone, but just questioning the talking points for a minute. I think you were kind of like, well, hold on, because this has been the talking point, and here's a position that kind mm -hmm. of destroys this talking point, or at least calls it into question, right? Mm -hmm. And then I think the people who have held on to this talking point for such a long time, nobody wants to be wrong, you know, that the pride mm -hmm. kind of kicks in. Mm -hmm. I think what ends up happening is instead of take, engaging your rebuttal to the talking point that mm -hmm. you've hold, held on to, it was kind of like, okay, he's poking holes at our understanding of how the world is viewed. Mm. So therefore, he must be part of the enemy. Mm. A modernist. A modernist, yeah. <laughs> Even though a modernist <laughs> is someone who denies dogma, and you haven't denied any dogma. Right. So, it, yeah. like, that the irony is... <laughs> I uphold the tra the magisterium and sacred tradition. Yeah, I mean rigorously. I I I don't want to be out of step with the magisterium, and I want to uphold the sacred deposit that has been handed down to us through sacred scripture and written or sorry oral tradition yeah. through the writings of the saints and the church fathers and the liturgy and all that. It, but I'm a modernist. <laughs> Just thinking, I don't think you guys know what that word even means. <laughs> yeah, there's that's there's such a huge problem, bro. Like a lot of words, like for example, like you know the words uh, um, misogynist or racist or or anti anti semite. Yeah. Yeah. All of these words have been thrown at everybody and everything. It's lost its meaning. And nowadays, we call everybody we disagree with as a modernist. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. It, it loses its its meaning. It, it really yeah. loses its meaning because there is actually a heresy of, of modernism. That right. is a real thing. Right. But when you label everyone a modernist, it loses its meaning. And so those who are actually modernists, you can't really identify because now everybody is on them with them. So. Sure. Sure. I don't know if you saw the video I made. So I, I had made a video about um, my, my thoughts on Pope Francis um yeah no I, I saw so this was like a video that you did three weeks or so ago yeah about four weeks ago yes yeah. yes i did watch that one it was like My, 20 minutes i think yeah it was about like yep. you know the, the three sons the analogy yep. i gave the three yep. son analogy i gave and then mm -hmm. I, you know i i said well the father needs to be more clear and stuff like that i agree I, I remember you ended up um uh, reaching out to me in private which i appreciate mm -hmm. you doing 
Mm -hmm. um, and you said, yeah, you said, I agree. Pope Francis needs to be more clear and, and all mm -hmm. that stuff because you, you recognize the problems with the current pontificate. Mm -hmm. and I know you do. Yeah. And, but you also said there's another side of it, too, is 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 there's also the sons also, are, uh, are, you know, have some culpability. I sat, mm -hmm. I marinated on that for three days. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just trying to put it all together. Mm -hmm. And because you said that, it kind of might say, you know what? Yeah, the sons are not, you know, off. You you, you know, that you, you can't, you, you can't kind of excuse them. And then I made the video, my thoughts on the traditional movement. Mm. So it was because of what you had said that got me to, to, to kind of say, okay, you know, here's some, some of the faults that we have in the trad movement. Well, so, I mean, I get what you're saying. Like, I, I agree. I think Pope Francis in some areas needs to be more clear. Right. I don't have a problem saying that. You've said that before. I, yeah. I think, however, sometimes when we're saying Pope Francis isn't clear enough, in fact, he has been clear. It's people are distorting what he said. We don't so, like for what example, he said. <laughs> so, for example, I'm clear enough on what I meant by we don't literally eat. Christ. I was very clear on what I meant. I was upholding the Council of Trent's understanding right. Right. Um, versus a heresy that would say the accidents are actually Christ, which is not the truth. Uh, the accidents right. are, you know, still the appearance of bread and wine. And so I was clear, but I was quickly taken out of context. And so the point here is, can you really say that I was unclear, that I had a duty? No, I think that it's people were twisting it and taking it out of context. They were the ones casting doubt on something that was already clear. And that's my point is sometimes, not all the time, sometimes that happens with Pope Francis and others. And I want to just say, but look, yeah, maybe sometimes Pope Francis is doing it, but sometimes you guys are actually casting doubt in an area where there, there was already clarity and you're, you're misinterpreting him. That's, that's an excellent point. And uh, when I when I made that the second video, the, mm -hmm. the, the thoughts of my trad movement, um, I had said on there. I don't know if you saw this, but I said, if we are really the the guys, mm -hmm. if we're really the ones, you know, if mm -hmm. we pride ourselves, we're the ones who know the church, that we know theology, we know the dogmas, we know the history, mm -hmm. we know the tradition. Okay, if mm -hmm. we're really that guy, then I think instead of the public now i've never publicly attacked pope francis ever mm -hmm. even internally i i've heard some things that i disagree with i'd wait i'll wait mm -hmm. but never i've never publicly because i just i just instinctually i think somebody who holds that high of an office that is you know you know christ has put put him there whether we disagree with it or not in his permissible or direct will mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um yeah. I, I i i i can't publicly put that stuff out there mm -hmm. But my thing is, if we're really going to be that that the type of guy, if we're really that group that understands, <laughs> right? Don't you think it's like you've said before? Don't you think it's better to to to, to err in caution, mm -hmm. not all, not only for the sake of the Pope mm -hmm. or for ourselves, but also for the sake of souls that we're trying to bring into the fold of Christ? Mm -hmm. Because how are you going to ask? or answer to somebody who comes and says, you want me to be part of your church? Mm -hmm. Yet mm -hmm. you think your Pope's heretical, your bishop yeah. sucks? Oh, by yeah. the way, your priest across the street is mm -hmm. heretical too? What are you asking mm -hmm. me to come into? So Your, your this, idolatrous Pope that worships a pagan idol? Yeah, you want me to come into <laughs> communion with him and participate in communion <laughs> with him and be right. under a, a pagan idolater? Sure, yeah. And I agree. And I, and I think what we need to stop, and, and I think what you were trying to do is you weren't going after the trans, and, and, and I know you well enough, Michael, I think what we're trying to do is you try to tell them, like, listen, guys, we're mm -hmm. asking Orthodox to become Catholics. Mm -hmm. We're asking people not to leave the Catholic Church for Orthodox. Mm -hmm. We're asking other people to come into the Catholic Church for their sake. Let's mm -hmm. see what the Pope is actually trying to say and charitably respond to it and get the context of it mm -hmm. versus every single time he opens his mouth, we're going to attack him. Mm -hmm. That doesn't bring souls into in, in Christ because now you're asking, here's the shepherd. Here's the, you know, here's mm -hmm. the one appointed mm -hmm. by Christ. Here's the seed of Peter. Mm -hmm. Now come in communion with him. That doesn't make any sense. And yeah. I think, I think once you said that they confuse you as a Pope Francis lover. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not a fan <laughs> of the present pontificate. Oh. <laughs> I think I've said that before. I mean, yeah. I respect, 
the office that he holds and the fact that God has providentially allowed him to hold that office. Right. Um, but whether or not he's doing a, su a successful job, I mean, that's something else. Um, but I, but I also still, even though I might have some criticisms of him, I still want to be fair to not misrepresent him. Yes. And because I know if I just kind of engage in this rash judgment and evil suspicion towards Pope Francis, I, I could, I see people doing that with the Bible who are atheists. And I say they're wrong when they do that. Whenever they rip Jesus out of context and say he's a false prophet, or they rip the apostles out of context and say that they misread the Old Testament, or right. whatever it is. When I see non-Christians do that to the New Testament, I say, look, I mean, if you're going to use this kind of hermeneutic of suspicion, you can twist it, the Bible to say anything, but you actually need to look at the context. And so that's my concern is if I'm going to do that with Pope Francis, well, first of all, I'm being unfair to him. But number two, why shouldn't I then apply that to the New Testament itself? Why why do I read why do I read the New Testament with the judgment of charity? And I look for ways to reconcile two scriptures instead of just saying scripture contradicts scripture. Yes. And, and agreeing with an atheist that says scripture contradicts scripture. Right. Why is it that I'm charitable to the Bible, but yes. I'm not when it comes to other people? You know? Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess in in in, in this respect, it kind of shows a little bit of biasness there. Because you don't like the person, you're going to assume malice out of everything that they do and say. Yeah, I, <laughs> it's rash judgment. Let me let me read yeah. to you a couple headlines right. here. These are a few headlines that I saw Let's see. just recently. I know you you, have, you may not have heard these yet. But let me know what you think about them. And I'm not going to name who issued these videos or whatever. Let's just read the headlines. Breaking bishops show Pope Francis's statement on Holy Communion contains heresy. Breaking. <laughs> Another one. Pope to approve contraception. And these are all by Catholics, by the way. Another one. God of surprises? Question mark. Pope Francis's new world religion. <laughs> Here's another one. Cardinal rallies the laity against Rome approved heresy. Again, wow. these are all alleged Catholics. One more. God curses anyone who tries to change the Catholic faith. And then they have a picture of Pope Francis. <laughs> and it's like, wait, you, you guys, you're Catholics, but you're telling me the Pope's trying to change the faith. Rome's approving of heresy. Rome's running a new world religion. The Pope's right. going to approve of contraception. And the Pope's recent statements on Holy Communion are heretical. And you want me to buy into Catholicism? That's an issue. That's an issue. You can you can hold those, and, and so in a way, I can sympathize uh, someone okay. like I don't agree with him, sure. but I can sympathize with someone like um, Skojek, uh -huh. who 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 had his you know faith rocked, mm -hmm. and he's battling with it himself, mm -hmm. right? You could you could have uh, these these inter internal battles within yourself, and trying to figure this stuff out and and seek advice from people who know what's going on and read all this stuff. But to come out and rash and with rash judgment, put out mm -hmm. headlines and then put out things like that. What happens when you're corrected? Mm -hmm. Like what happens when someone pokes holes? Like I'm so afraid to put to put to even put out a thought on 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 Twitter. I'm so afraid to put out a thought on Twitter only because I have to literally, before I put it, I have to like do, do some sumo stuff. I have to like object myself, answer my objection before somebody else does it. And then I'm like, okay, this is foolproof. I can, I can put this out. And you know what? You'll still be twisted. You'll still, still be misunderstood. Right. <laughs> so you think you think that they won't, but I promise you, they'll find a way to. They'll, they'll come out. Yeah. So they, like, like you, like you have to make sure all of your bases are so covered before you put something like that out there. Because if someone pokes a hole, yeah, on that headline, or even your, or for example, like uh, the the other day, uh, there was a headline about about the Pope who said uh, they said. Uh, uh, Pope Francis says that um, priests and nuns also watch, you know, content that that are contrary to the sixth ninth commandment, pornography. Mm -hmm. That was the headline. I think it was like mm -hmm. it was like a secular, mm -hmm. you know, secular headline. Mm -hmm. 
And then Steve, Steve Cunningham, who, whom I, 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 I like and I respect a lot. He, mm-hmm. he's, he's the one who runs um, Reason and no, sorry, he runs Reason and Theology. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's the one of uh, Cessus Yeah, yeah. Sent yeah. me the article and he said, how many Catholics actually clicked on the article and read the whole thing? Or mm-hmm. just went out, or, or did they just go off of the headline? Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah. I can guarantee you they went off of the headline. Because I opened and I read the whole mm-hmm. thing. It's not what he said. It's not what he meant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it, again, if we're going to be those guys, mm-hmm. That we expect other people to come to us when it comes to theology and helping people, you know, it's like we're the trad Catholic, we're the ones who understand. We're gonna be those guys. We have to make sure that if we're reading something, it's not just headlines and then just screaming, "This is heresy." You mm-hmm. gotta open up to see what the context is. And you're right. If we're if we're gonna look at the actual meaning of mm-hmm. what the apostle meant, or or mm-hmm. like Saint Paul, mm-hmm. okay, what did Saint Paul mean when he said these things mm-hmm. in these words? We, you know what is what, what what is the proper context mm-hmm. we go out of our way mm-hmm. like you said but when it comes to this we're just going to go off of the headline and you know what they'll say in response oh well that's scripture that's god breathed pope francis is god breathed but that's that distinction is irrelevant the point is the right. point is you're giving the judgment of charity to reconcile one thing with another, right. but you're not doing that with Pope Francis. Not that Pope Francis is God breathed scriptures. Yes. Yes. And even if you're given the judgment of charity, even if you like went to your, I think like, and I told my brother this, I, what I appreciate about you, Mike, is the fact that you could recognize that Pope Francis is one of the worst popes that we've had. Mm. Uh, as far as his pontificate, not so much him, yeah, yeah. As far as pontificate, yeah, like that. Yeah, his pontificate. I think he means well. Yeah. But as far as if we're going to talk about the success of a pontificate in this day and age, yeah, I have some legitimate criticism and very serious criticisms there. I think he's intends well, means well, not questioning any of that. Right now, let me ask you this: Do you think Mm -hmm. some of that criticism that you had of him in the past on certain things have been uh, alleviated? Because you some, be, but some not things, all. Some things, right? Some, but not all. Um, right. I, I still retain some concerns about okay. certain directions. Because you point. looked into them, mm-hmm. and, and and you tried to find every possible way to yeah. be charitable. But yeah. then you said, "I can't, you know, I can't reconcile this, or I can't make sense right. of this." Right. But I think the problem we have here is is everything he says or does. And I have this problem. I came from a Nova Sordo parish for, mm-hmm. for years on years. I go to TLM for a lot. Since 2016, I became exclusively TLM. Because I can't find any uh, Eastern churches around here. I'm in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you know, we have we California yeah. has Starbucks is around the uh, you know in, in every corner. We have Baptist churches in every corner. Just can tell. Yeah, this is the same, same here. <laughs> same thing with yeah, the South, right? Yeah. So yeah. I go I I go to the TLM exclusively, mm-hmm. right? But coming from coming from the Nova Sordo, there's something about the folks in the Nova Sordo that I do appreciate. Mm-hmm. They're a care for the poor. Mm-hmm. That I don't see that in the TLM folks. Mm. I think we're so concerned about smoking pipes and talking theology and you know what was called intellectual effeminacy in, in, in some ways. <laughs> that there, it's like oh wait no I you know I donated to my local pro life community which is great you know mm-hmm. do that, but why are all the Food pantries in Nova Sordo parishes. Mm-hmm. It's like it's to me. It's like it almost got to a point like, oh, poor French loves the poor, and then we hate the poor <laughs> <laughs> because we hate poor Francis. Therefore, we hate the poor. And it's like it, it poor Francis to... cares about the environment, so I'm going to litter every chance I get. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's what it, it, it almost became. That which is so unfortunate because you know, and and, and I have criticism of Benedict. And he's a lot of trad's hero. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and so, I have criticisms of Pope, Pope Benedict, um, John Paul II. A big one is the CC. Right. Um, right. Yeah, can't can't square that circle. I think that that was wrong. Um, I I accept his canonization, but that doesn't sure. mean that I have to say that everything he did in his pontificate was right. I have some concerns about Paul the Six, John the Twenty Third, but I mean, there's also preconciliar popes that have issues with, and so, um, right. <clears throat> you know, I have, I have criticisms all around, I guess. <laughs> no, and I agree. Yeah, and I agree. And um, we can't expect, and, I, and you, you know this too. Like, I think mm-hmm. all, all the audience and everybody watching here, and everybody in the Catholic world knows this. It's mm-hmm. like Saint Vincent Ferrer is my favorite saint ever. I mean, the guy was a walking, talking miracle. He averaged more miracles per day than LeBron, you know, than LeBron does assists. I mean, the guy, the guy was, 
But he he even discerned he picked the wrong pope mm. in his mm. lifetime. There were two popes. They thought that the wrong pope was the right pope. Mm-hmm. Should we revoke his his canonization too? Because mm-hmm. he was he you know he was an error in his life at one time. Or yeah, and wrong? see with cases like that, I would make a distinction between material schism and formal schism. So if if you have like a saint who accepts an anti pope, I would say materially they were in schism. Sure, but that doesn't necessarily mean formally they were schismatic and that somehow they're deprived of God's grace. Like you could have somebody who's materially in schism who's still living within the life that participating in the divine life. Makes sense. Just just in the same way, you can materially be in heresy and still go to heaven. Um, that doesn't necessarily That's mean just because you, you're materially in heresy that you're formal um, and heretic. And some will point to cases like that and say, uh, well, you see, you got saints who accepted antipopes, so now Benevacantism is okay. But wait, no, hold on. We're not <laughs> necessarily saying that every person who's accepted that Pope, or says that Pope Francis isn't the Pope and Benedict is the Pope is somehow formally schismatic. Correct. But they are materially schismatic. Correct. Yeah. In the same way that I would have said a saint who picks an anti Pope is materially and schismatic. That's, that's true. Yeah, so those distinct, distinctions and definitions are, are, are necessary. Have you noticed that social media is overrun right now with Benefacontis instead of a contest? Catholic social media. Is that just my impression? If not directly set of a contest, the spirit of set of a contestism, yes. Mm-hmm. What do you yeah. mean by spirit of set of a contestism? Parse that one out for me. I mean, I mean somebody who actually, I, I, I would say, in in a way, has hasn't publicly come out and said I've left the church, mm-hmm. but is is using set of a contest talking points in public, but yet still remains in the church. Mm-hmm. That's what I call this. I guess in the in the spirit of, of set of a contest, mm-hmm. is like you haven't formally come out and said, I'm a set of a contest, the church, mm-hmm. you know, the, 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 the chair is mm-hmm. empty, mm-hmm. but, but you, you are, you are cheering, you, you cheer on brother diamonds over Casman. <laughs> and to me, I'm right. just like, what are we doing here, guys? It's like, <laughs> brother diamonds are hero at this point. It's like, what's... <laughs> that's, that's my problem. <laughs> That was really weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember seeing that, and I still am seeing it. And yeah, that's a little odd to me. Um, but I mean, it seems like there are a lot of people who are saying that Pope Francis isn't the Pope. Benedict is the Pope. Yeah. And I, I I just get the impression that this is becoming pervasive. But maybe that's just a small you know, group of people that I'm seeing. So for me, it seems like a large amount of people, but that's just my little tiny perspective. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I think, I, I, I think the minority ends up being the loudest in any case, even politically yeah. right now, the left is actually a minority, mm. but they're mm. the loudest. So therefore we think that they're the majority. Yeah. So you think it's just more, they're the most vocal, but not necessarily in numbers. Right, I think they're the most vocal, and I think there's nobody out there that's even interested in, or even think that they have the uh, the right words to, to to come back at them, or, or to, to, to to. I got engage, in trouble the engage. other day for saying that benevolentism is schismatic. Again, I'm not saying that everybody who maintains that is right. formally schismatic and is sure. like guilty of the sin of right. schism on their soul. Right. I never have claimed that, right. but I will say the position is schismatic. Right. That's the very definition according to canon law of schism. Like, what have we forgotten the definition of schism? Does, what does schism mean at this point? <laughs> it's like, does it have a definition anymore? If this is not schismatic, right? right. What is it's right. a lack of submission mm. to the Roman pontiff. You can't submit to the Roman pontiff if you don't believe he's the Roman pontiff. That's the definition of schism, correct? Well, I got in trouble for saying that the other day, yeah. I mean, I, I. So at least, at least for me, I don't know yeah. about other folks. At least for yeah. me, I it, it's very easy for me to wrap my hand in, my head in like, okay, Pope Francis still holds the, the office. He's just not good at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, well, I, I don't understand why you can't just put those. Yeah. It's like, it's like you could still hold the office, but you're just yeah. not good at it, right? Right. Um, you know, a CEO could still be the CEO of a company. He's just running the company down. You know, it's like, do we mm-hmm. say, oh, no, you mm-hmm. ain't the CEO no more. The CFO is a real CEO. You know what I'm saying? It's like, right. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. I can wrap my head around that and actually make sense of it. No problem. Mm-hmm. And and I guess to be sympathetic to them, I don't know if, if this is if this is the case or not. I think that they 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 think that 
he has attacked them in a certain way. Mm-hmm. And when 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 Shunas Custodes came out and, and all of these things in the more proprio, mm-hmm. you know, to me, I was also I was like, hey, like, like, why are we doing this? Like, mm-hmm. you know, we were, we're really coming after people who just want to go to, mm-hmm. to mass and and and, mm-hmm. and worship Christ. And it's like, but you know, there's not much pushback on the people who want to push all this left agenda. Mm-hmm. Like that's you know that's the issue, and, and I think that they 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 get to a point where they become so desperate to mm-hmm. try to reconcile this. Well, he's not the real pope, so I have to listen to him. Mm. I saw a video the other day. I'm not naming names, but it was a lady who does social media, and I guess she's a Catholic, and she was saying that one of her problems with Pope Francis is she feels he's an a spiritually abusive father because he just hates traditional Catholics. And, and she just is bewildered because he just hates her. And, and I just <laughs> thought, oh, gosh, no, you've, you've, you're really twisting Pope Francis here. Um, what he's doing is he's criticizing some traditional Catholics who are kind of the pharisaical type, who would value schism over um, community with the Roman pontiff or communion with the Roman pontiff. Right. He's going against more of the radical ones. He's not degrading all traditional Catholics. Correct. But she interprets whenever he criticizes some traditional Catholics as criticizing all traditional Catholics and, and as personally. criticizing her personally. Right. So she's confused, like, I'm in communion with the spiritual father who hates me. Right. And she goes on yeah. social media and spreads that. And I'm right, just thinking, right. um, first of all, you got it wrong. And then second of all, should you really be disseminating this on social media? You're just perpetuating this narrative. This is the, this is the big issue. I mean, I read an article uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday on a Sunday where Pope Francis told the, the, the what is it? I haven't said it to you, the, um, the French bishops mm. to, 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 to show those who have been affected by Strachonis Custodis with care. Mm-hmm. That goes to show you, he's not attacking every trad out there or mm-hmm. somebody who enjoy who wants to attend the TLM. Mm-hmm. He's not. So, so, and I and I, I agree with you. Yeah, and I, I think people again, I can sympathize with some of them in that in that route, but it's not. It's it's going out on social media. It's not the way to do it. Yeah, it it's seems like that's <clears throat> going to further perpetuate this agenda, this narrative. Right. And if you're wrong about it, you've now perpetuated a false narrative. You're Correct. just reinforcing it for people who have already kind of bought into that bias. Yes, that, that seems to be a serious problem to me. Yeah, it's it it, it is a problem. <clears throat> yeah, well, I don't know how we can. Uh, I, I don't know what the best way to kind of ring. I think if we're going to ring this in, I th- I think it's up to the traditional Catholics, in my personal opinion, and and I like the approach you you did. And again, like I said, like I told Elijah, and you know mm-hmm. Elijah, mm-hmm. I said what I what I appreciate about Mike, Michael Lofton is the fact that yeah, even though he's not, it's easy, it's very easy when you don't like someone's pontificate or don't like him at all, it's very easy to fall into the temptation of okay, if mm-hmm. he said it, I don't want to hear it, or he's right. being malicious and horrible. Right. It takes a lot of discipline for you to look at somebody that you might not like or don't agree with or respect in a certain way as a person or what he says, for example, I'm not talking about the Pope, just anybody in general, Mm -hmm. yet still give them the benefit of charity, the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where all the traditional traditional Catholics, especially those who have social media, Mm -hmm. should go. Because what good are you doing when when, when when you're slandering the Pope in front of the whole world, yet asking them to come to communion and uh, uh, in, in, into the church. And I talking, I was talking to somebody the other day who who, who was doing that. He was just talking mm-hmm. about the Pope. This I said, and he said, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about going to Orthodox. Mm-hmm. He said, I want to go to Orthodox church. And, and and I simply told him, I said, what you're really saying to me here is this: I'm going to leave the mm-hmm. church in which Christ established, and I know He established this, mm-hmm. and I'm going to go next door to my cousin church, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to come back until he appoints the Pope that agrees with me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what you're really saying. Mm-hmm. Is, that, is that what sch- schism is? Mm-hmm. You are, you become, now you become the Pope yourself. So now, now the Pope has to agree with your preconceived notions of what church. It's like, no, Christ put him in here, mm-hmm. whether it's permissible will or his intended will, mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. it may be. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Christ put him in. Shouldn't we rely on the providence of God at this point? Mm-hmm. 
that's where I'm at, to be honest with you. And I think that we should give the Pope, because of his office, the charity. And I agree with you there. And I do, by the way, think it's merely his permissive will that he allows someone Pope. I don't take the position that like the act, the Holy Spirit actively seeks out this one person as the Pope. And <laughs> sure, I don't. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think humans, we we have free will, <laughs> and we can appoint somebody who's not fit for the office. I used God to buy that. God will allow it. You. Yeah, God may allow it. But that doesn't necessarily mean that this person was fit for office. I think we've had popes before that they had no business being popes. God right. allowed them to be popes, right. but they really had no business being a pope. Right. There, there's some people who have no business being a CEO of this or that company. Correct. Right. They might be good people, but that's not their charism. They need to be doing something else in life. Yeah, like Charles Biner. Thing, Charles, <laughs> another office reference here. This is great. I love this. <laughs> we, can, we, we can do all day with office reference. Right? Charles Minor had no he had no business being. Yeah, I know. Yeah. This is a perfect example. Charles yeah. Minor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although I don't know if Charles Minor was a good guy. See, I, see, I kind of feel like he, he wasn't. So he, he was wasn't. not only not a good guy. <laughs> he was also not fit to be. What was it the district manager? He was the district manager. Yeah, he yeah. lost more accounts to the Michael Scott Paper Company under his watch. I know, man. Than Jan and Ryan <laughs> ever just, did. It, it wasn't fit, you know. Right, but God, right. God in His providential right. will allowed him to be in that office. <laughs> correct, correct, and it was corrected. You know, I, I, I think, you know, I think we will um, eventually. Um, um, I don't know when, but I think, I think God will appoint. You know, we will appoint a, a good and holy, mm -hmm. virtuous pope, and mm -hmm. who will I think? Uh, I think lead, so. Lead, lead the church. We need a good leader. Yeah, I think we're eventually going to, I don't know when it will be, but I do yeah. think we're eventually going to get a very strong leader who is going to get us out of the current crisis. Correct. I really do believe that's going to happen. I don't know if it will happen in our lifetime, though. I don't think so either. Um, and, the, and, and the reason I... Uh... I mean, the reason I think that is because what I'm seeing here is is and, and tell me if you see something different, but this is what mm -hmm. I'm I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing that there's a lot of the older folks in the 60s and 70s mm -hmm. who had liberation theology and then all that mm -hmm. stuff, the theology mm -hmm. that are in the high rankings of the Vatican mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And 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 they are trying so hard and desperately to appoint some of the people who they can shape and they're you know who think like them. Right. Yeah. But but I think they're running out of those folks. I think a lot of <clears> younger <throat> priests who are going to seminary. Yeah, even when it comes to Novus Ordo or whatever order it is, yeah. I think they're they're really they're really more solid than than, than the older yeah. folks are. Eventually, you're gonna have you're gonna run out. You're gonna cycle. You're gonna you're gonna have to put in cardinals that are more solid. Eventually, eventually. I eventually. fear right now, however, that some of these that are traditional might sometimes be overly traditional in <laughs> the, the pendulum that, has swung the other side. Uh, yeah, yeah, in the sense that it's gone to the other side, and I yeah. fear that I don't know if they'll remain Catholic long. I honestly don't know that. That's a problem. So, like yeah. these vocations that we're getting, are are they going to be long lasting? Right. I hope so, but yeah. I just I kind of wonder, will they be? Right. You know. Again, if we had the traditional movement, if we had this atmosphere of charity, and and, and especially in the online service, because right now the online is a public square. Yeah. Right. That's a public square at the moment. You know, it, yep. we're no longer preaching out in the docks like Saint Vincent Ferrer did. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 online, mm -hmm. and I think. That if if there was this deep, you know, in depth analysis to theology and to to like what you're doing with the with the magisterium, because I know for a fact that there's been some fruits in what you've done, and I mm. and I've experienced it personally. I came out of Mass, and, and this is Kentucky. Mm. We have a small chaplaincy mm -hmm. here in Kentucky, right? Um, this is why we were able to stay in that parish after uh, with the water proprio. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's 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 just it's a chaplaincy. So mm -hmm. we we were in there. I come out of mass, and this guy says, "Hey, you look familiar. Uh, were you on reason of theology?" And I said, "Yes, I was." I went to him because you know Michael Lawton. I said, "Yeah, no person." He says, "So you know Elijah and Eric?" I said, "Yes." He goes, "If it wasn't for those guys, I was on my way to the Orthodox Church." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because mm -hmm. of their because of them explaining to me mm -hmm. how everything works, I was able to stay Catholic. Oh. But you know, those those there are some people would say, you know, Mike does a great job with dealing with the orthodoxy. But what they don't realize is, but the same things that I'm saying in relation to Eastern Orthodoxy, I'm applying those same principles in the things that they don't agree with. Yeah. 
the very reason why I'm saying Eastern Orthodoxy is not where Catholics should go is right. the very reason why I'm saying we should not go to Benevacantism or Sedevacantism or this reactionary position within traditional Catholicism. Correct. It's the exact same reason. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you know how I view it? Uh. I view it as in like we're in a ship mm -hmm. and it's got some holes. And some folks are saying, this is too much work to patch up all these holes. Let's jump ship. Yeah. And you're like, we got to patch up these holes because this is the ship that we need to be on. Right. Right. That's how, that's how I see it. That's my analogy. That's a good analogy. That's what I'm saying. That's and, what you're saying. And, and I'm also saying, you're, you're so you want to jump to this other ship because we have holes in here, right? Okay. Yeah. But that other ship has more holes in it than this one does. <laughs> Okay, and so they then say, okay, well, I agree with you. I agree with you, Michael. I'm not going to jump to that ship. That one has a lot of holes in it. So I'm going to jump to this other ship, and then I point it out. But wait, this other ship has more holes in it than that other one. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that other ship has already hit the I, iceberg. It's only on its way yeah. to the Titanic. It's already halfway down the water. Right. I'm just trying to hold people to a consistent position. And I'm saying right. what I'm saying is consistent with all of these things. Yes. Like I'm consistently criticizing all of these other ships. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you if if you put it in that analogy, and if somebody was really, really charitable and could actually view it in that in that sense, mm -hmm. they could say, oh, I, I I think I've mis I've misunderstood Michael's point. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. I think that's what somebody would have to conclude if they're honest with themselves. You know, I'm curious, wrapping it up here, have there been any, you did mention a good positive experience there that I guess came from social media. Have there been any other things that you think is is, is like beneficial from social media or is it just all a dumpster fire and it's worth it at this point? No, that's a good, that's a good <laughs> question. Uh, <laughs> I think because I, I struggle with that sometimes. I kind of right. wonder, like, are we doing more harm to the name of Christ than good at this point? Yeah, I, I think overall, I would say, I think there are some corners, mm -hmm. some pockets of corners where relationship is being made. Mm -hmm. and I think that that's good, but I think overall, if you ask me overall, I think I, th I, th I think it, we're doing more harm. To, 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 to more harm. Than, does that mean we should just kind of like shut it down? Or <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> it's, it's, or, or, or I think instead of shutting it down, I think change in, in how change. we react. To like work. stay, stay online, but change our approach. Change our approach and how we are because it's a medium. You know, it's mm -hmm. like it's like you know, for example, like for me, like when it comes to music, mm -hmm. you know, I I, I I look at this playing field of just blasphemy and and, and modesty among the Catholic community. I'm sorry, among the rap culture, mm -hmm. right? And then it's like at one point I did jump ship i did one point i did say you know what forget this 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 is irredeemable mm -hmm. and then i said well why don't i just give it a shot and see what i could do mm -hmm. and then you know give people who actually enjoy this music in moderation uh you know something to listen to and maybe some way in 100 years from later on it could change the culture i don't know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i think if we change in, in a way and how we reacted to one another and you know, this whole idea of unite the clans, but the clans are chewing each other's head off. Where's the unity here? See, my here's my thing with the unite the clans, because I used to say the unite the clans. Here's my here's my <laughs> <laughs> here's my take on unite the clans. Here's right, why right. I've had to here's why I've had to revise the unite the clans thing. Okay. <laughs> um, we're asking for union when there is not substantial agreement on essential issues that's a good point that's my problem some of these point. groups i think have positions that are mutual or diametrically opposed to catholic ecclesiology good i point. just don't think it can be integrated in catholic ecclesiology right. so i i upon what basis can we unite we can have a partial unity we can speak the truth about some things that we agree with sure. but i don't know how we could fully unite if we have irreparable differences in ecclesiology that that's just incompatible with catholic ecclesiology that's a great point Mike. yeah but how many people yeah. know about ecclesiology not a lot of people and so right. when i say that they think well what are you talking about you know this, this, <laughs> you're just being divisive and, and i'm right. just saying well this is part of the problem. I think we need to work through some of these ecclesiological issues yeah. so that we can then see, okay, yeah, this is irreconcilable. That, that's an excellent point. I, I, I would have no, no rebuttal to that mm -hmm. because I think at this point, when we say unite the clans, 
it's only you only could be in unity with what I deem mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's that's, the, that's what Willie is saying. Because mm -hmm. are, are we supposed to be united under one pontiff, under one church, one baptism? Yes, yes, one faith, one church, one right. baptism. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think the unity has to be full, not just partial. Yeah, you're right. And and if somebody's saying, but this church is mm -hmm. teaching heresy and destroying right. souls yeah. and is leading people to idolatry. We don't have unity on this one church anymore. Correct. I, I, I don't think we do anymore because that's that that just is nonsensical. Correct. Correct. Yeah. But your approach is, no, we could find unity if we only slow down and look at what everything's being said in the context and mm -hmm. interpret it according to light of tradition and the other councils. Yeah, like I, I think that right now the situation in the Catholic Church is still consistent with the claims that Catholicism has historically made. I don't think that our ecclesiology has substantially changed. People just completely ran with a misinterpretation of Pope Benedict's recent comments yes. about Vatican II and a letter that he sent to Franciscan. And he was talking about so, some differences in ecclesiology today with the Middle Ages. He's not talking about substantial differences in ecclesiology. He's talking about accidental differences. Mm. He's not talking about the substance of the church has changed. Right, that, right. I mean, that's not, that's not. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. just a very basic distinction like that would help Help you realize quickly that no that's not what he's saying but if you don't know basic distinctions like that you're going to hear about changes to ecclesiology you're going to think oh wait you're changing the way the apostles set things up and and right. just run with it you know that's true no that's 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 an excellent point that's an excellent <laughs> point yeah yeah and i i i think if you if you don't mind me saying this Mike, yeah yeah um it's my my rule is don't be the person mm -hmm. like um like St. Thomas St. Thomas Moore said mm -hmm. if you've seen that, that movie it's a uh, uh, what's it called uh, the man for all seasons a man of all yeah, seasons yeah it's been a long time since i've seen when, it yeah. when his when his uh, i think Rupert says uh, i would um i would i would tear down every law in in England to get to the devil and he says up and he says and and when the last law has come well the last law has been torn down and the devil turns around on you you have nothing to protect you mm. so i think if you're going to create an atmosphere of criticizing this and that as soon as you say something that other people will deem mm -hmm. to be unclear mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you've created this atmosphere of it turning around on you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden you become the victim of the very landscape that you created. Yeah, yeah. And that's a problem, I think. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. I, I think so. Uh, but I think that some people could be more careful to, again, interpret individuals in context right. and not just completely misinterpret something and, and, you know, take a false position out of it. Right. Um, and ask for clarification or something like that. That's the, that's the way to do it. Ask for yeah. clarification. Don't just assume that the person that you don't like is out of speaking malice and evil. The devil's not under every rock, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Was it under every other rock? Is that Oh, F F F Rupert <laughs> says, yeah, he's under every yeah, other rock. Every you other rock. Yeah. You can't, you can't attribute every single thing that someone does as, uh, you know, is, uh, but uh, and unfortunately sometimes that's what they do because it's just, <laughs> It's every other rock. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I don't want to go to the other extreme. The devil doesn't exist. No. No, we yeah. can't go to that extreme either. Yeah. There are yeah. real problems. The devil's not under any rock. That's yeah. that would be the <laughs> Fawaz, yeah. I enjoyed this conversation thoroughly. This was really fun. Thanks, I appreciate you coming on and doing this. I'd love to get you back on whenever you uh, uh, release your album. Thanks, bud. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I, I'll have you on my channel on Monday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's going to be fun. Yeah, so it's, it's, give us a sneak peek. Yeah, sure. So I, I started a new series. Um, I think you know there's so many great folks out there that are working in the vineyard, and and mm -hmm. people know you of your from your work, mm -hmm. and they have some you know aspects of of your of your, of your life and what your likes and don't likes are. Mm -hmm. um, but I think most of the folks they know them of their work. I wanted to bring you in to talk about you. To talk mm -hmm. about like mm -hmm. you know what did you watch Saturday morning cartoon? What's your mm -hmm. favorite food? Mm -hmm. Favorite restaurant? Favorite show? Um, uh, just stuff like that, just to get everybody to get to, get to know you better mm -hmm. versus what your work is. This is lighthearted and it's going to be a lot of fun. 
Yeah, that's that looking forward to that. Yeah. So um yeah, the Monday, office right? Trivia. Monday. The office trivia. No, this is gonna be good. We'll see how so, good you are. Yeah. What, what's the name of the channel? Uh so it's Enoch. Okay. Enoch, the name yeah. of the channel, and the series is called Get to Know. Get to know right. series. Yeah. I'll put we'll a link to, to it Michael. there. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, All right. Man. I look forward to it. Everybody hit that like button and the subscribe button and pray for us both. We'll see y'all later. Oh, wait, before you go, I would really appreciate it if you would consider supporting this channel. This is my primary means to provide for my family, and it also helps me to produce content like this video. If you would like to support me, become a patron by visiting patreon.com forward slash reason and theology. You'll also get access to extra exclusive content when you become a patron. Lastly, hit that like button and the subscribe button, and be sure to leave a comment down below. God bless.